we will now have one of those uh, swift talks you remember from yesterday uh, swift talks as you will surely recall are uh, short interventions you could say that uh, that sh uh, shall introduce you to um, specific applications uh, that are innovative we think uh, from uh, for, uh, and help to promote open science practices um, uh, in the social sciences. Uh, uh, Julia mentioned in her keynote uh, uh, the, the idea of uh, real-time uh, knowledge accumulation, I think, uh, and R markdown, and we actually uh, 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 separately, and that's actually exactly what we will be hearing something about uh, right now. The, uh, I think, uh, so it's a really intriguing uh, uh, idea of uh, building up our knowledge base in real time, uh, facilitated uh, by uh, by an R Markdown um, sort of platform. Uh, we will hear about uh, uh, plans to do this and uh, steps that have been undertaken towards this already uh, from Jürgen Schneider from the University of Tübingen, um, who has uh, yeah uh, thought in that direction and actually uh, programmed something. Hi everyone, um, my name is Jürgen Schneider and um, together with Samuel Merck, who can't be there today unfortunately, I'm doing a research in teacher education. So I know we come from very different backgrounds, just let, let me give you a quick idea of my background. Um, I'm mostly doing um, quantitative hypothesis testing uh, research and uh, when we do studies we mostly go to, o o over the course of like, um, four or five, six weeks, we go to um, course, uh, teacher education courses. Um, hopefully the students will participate in our studies. We hand out questionnaires um, and afterwards there will be a phase of um, debriefing. We're gonna tell them how our uh, research interest was, how our, our hypotheses were, and sometimes we're gonna um, share some data from previous studies or from um, um, prior studies. So um, at one point we thought about why don't we just try to uh, directly feedback and um, stream the, the data uh, and the evidence we accumulated so far, uh, including the data we just um, collected um, and, and stream it to the participants. So right now in my talk, I want to put the idea out there that um, that might not just be something fancy to do for all participants in a deep breathing phase, but might also make a lot of sense from a um, standpoint of pre-registration and a reproducible reporting. Why does that make sense from, why might that make sense from an open science standpoint? Uh, I want to uh, argue from two standpoints here. One uh, will be pre-registration. And I don't have to tell you guys um, where and why to pre-register studies. Um, I just want to um, um, drive your attention to what we actually do when we pre-register pre-register studies. Um, so what we do is we take our hypotheses, we take our uh, design plan, and when we do a quantitative hypothesis testing, we also um, would be able to uh, write our uh, data analysis code and write it down and make it publicly available before um, data collection. Um, so, when data comes in, actually everything is there um, that we're able to um, uh, come up with or create the, the results um, from our, or concerning our hypotheses. Um, open um, source software packages, we can do that, is obviously with R. Um, the other point 
uh, I want to argue from is a reproducible reporting or AKA what others see how our evidence came to be. So at the end, when the study is done, uh, we have the choice if we want to simply make, uh, write like a text article, if we want to share the data analysis code, or if we also want to share data. And we can share a lot more, but I'm just gonna uh, leave it at that right now. Um, so we can easily do that in, for example, one file with R Markdown and R Shiny. Um, but when we do that at the end of the research process, uh, basically this part is more or less uh, a black box for the most researchers in the community who don't conduct the study. Um, so if we really commit to uh, the idea of pre-registration and we have hypothesis testing uh, research, we're able to uh, take our data uh, analysis code and um, live stream um, how our evidence um, uh, accumulates in the process of uh, data collection uh, and not just at the end. So we're gonna kind of get rid of this black box in the middle. Um, now if you only look at these two parts and uh, blend out the dissemination part, looks like uh, optional stopping or p-hacking, but I want to argue that this is quite the difference or quite the opposite. Um, I, I would argue that live streaming your data is um, actually uh, an even further commitment to pre-registration because you put your hypotheses out there, um, you um, put your data analysis code out there and say, okay, this is my hypothesis and this is how I'm gonna test it and I'm constantly updating uh, the, um, uh, the state at, um, uh, or the, um, the state of my, of, my, of my evidence I have so far for or against my hypotheses. <clears throat> so if you think this is a good idea, and I thought it might be because, for example, when Julia um, made a point about there are um, studies that pre-register although uh, the data collection was already finished, that would be a hard thing to do if you if you live stream your data collection. Um, how would we do it? What tools do we have? I would say the uh, answer uh, are um, open access uh, software packages. Um, for example, R Markdown, which is an easy to use a markup language, um, and which in my opinion is quite amazing because you can integrate text you wanna write, um, data, or any files you want to integrate, uh, data analysis codes, or the results of your data analysis in just one file. And you can, uh, with the help of software packages like Knitter and uh, Pandoc, um, convert this markdown into a standalone HTML file, for example, that you can share, or a PDF file, or a Word file, or a PowerPoint. Um, on the other side, you can write static uh, reports that make sense uh, for linear stories. Um, but if, you, if I want uh, to allow you um, to explore my data, um, or if I want to present it in a flexible way, it makes sense if I engage in interactive reporting. Um, so I allow you um, over some uh, user interface to interact with my data. I'm not gonna go into depth um, with this graph, but if you want to live stream um, your data, all you have to do is update um, your database, and uh, you can do that with um, software packages like Former. Um, so those packages are already there, we just have to uh, bring them together. And I'm not a programmer, so um, packages like Flex Dashboard for R will help me to 
uh, with easy to use templates um, to create apps and uh, that are that might be publicly available um, and uh, to easily create such a user interface. And of course, I brought you an example. And let's just assume <coughs> I would be interested in the research question, uh, which sentiments dominate on our conference? So, in my opinion, the open, science con uh, the open science community is rather positive, so my hypothesis would be uh, there are more positive than negative utterances, and the valence, the valence of positive sentiments are higher than those of negative sentiments. That was just random hypotheses and random questions I put out there. Um, so, I can't make a data collection with you right now. I can't give you a web-based survey, so I just scraped your tweets uh, with the hashtag of OSSC19 and run a sentiment uh, analysis. So that whole code, that whole code of sentiment analysis is already um, stored, and I just update the data now. So um, this is the app you would be able to create as well. Um, and I have a second tab right here with the results. Um, before Julia's um, talk, there were 238 tweets in a whole, um, 450 sentiments coded. So uh, Flex dashboard will allow you, um, uh, will give you templates for um, a value, value boxes like these. It will give you templates for uh, gauge boxes like these. Um, I made an interactive uh, plot using ggplot so we can have a look at positive versus negative uh, count of tweets. We can have a um, look at positive versus negative valence. Uh, so it seems that there is a like a, like a bottom effect. Um, and so this is all descriptive data. If we want to live stream um, how sure we are concerning our hypotheses, we might um, compute base factors. So I would argue that computing p-values over and over again is really critical if you update your, um, uh, your database. So I would argue to um, compute uh, base factors. And I'm just going to pull the latest tweets. So that should update. It takes a lot of time because I'm not a good programmer. Um, uh, we're going to have a new base factor. We're going to have new um, counts of tweets. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure. I made a coding error somewhere with the base factor, so if somebody will find it, um, I'm uh, I'll be willing uh, to um, to drink a beer with you on the next conference. Uh, you can pull that from GitHub. So, yeah, those are just the possibilities we have, um, and I just want to put this idea out there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jürgen, for, uh, for, for this uh, really, really uh, fascinating uh, presentation. Uh, we, we, we now know that uh, Julia's uh, keynote uh, had a two-point uh, positivity <laughs> effect uh, <laughs> onto our overall <laughs> social media sentiment. That's wonderful to know. <laughs> Are there any questions? Uh, we have time for one or two for, for Jürgen, if, if, if you have any for uh, this project. Flavio. Hi, I've been a strong proponent of putting uh, art markdown files in, in, in terms of code and analysis um, uh, for, for data that is available. Uh, and uh, it, it's static, so it's not live. But I'm wondering what do you think whether um, for a given paper, um, uh, researchers should for example, upload their R Markdown to GitHub and so everybody can try to reproduce their uh, code and data and see if there's mistakes. So what is your opinion there? Um, so 
What was your uh, proposal, what they put up? Just the static markdown. Uh, Just to run your analysis yeah. uh, on, uh, in R and have an R markdown uh, yeah. being uploaded to GitHub and associate that link with the paper. Um, I would obviously um, say that that would be a good thing um, because it uh, kind of will associate to your journal article, which is static as well. So if you have like a linear story, um, linear markdown uh, reporting will make sense in my opinion. Um, I wouldn't say that uh, the more fancy it gets, uh, the, the better. It's just um, um, the question uh, that what can we do with it? So if I want to present interactively uh, data and live stream it, that makes sense. Um, if I have a linear story, uh, linear uh, reporting makes sense. Any further questions? If not, uh, we thank Jürgen for his presentation. <laughs> thank you very much. And we, uh, we gather this is in the early stages of development, so we will be watching closely what comes out of this. Yeah, hope, I, hope that's, just, uh, that's actually the, the first app I right. um, came up with for this idea. So I uh, just created it for the conference. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so well, we hope you continue to work on it. Uh, we will break now and reconvene at three for another special component of this uh, component-rich conference, which is the what's called the MCS uh, Gases Pre-Registration Challenge. Uh, see you in a few minutes.